After you get the basic walls, roof, and floor in, you're going to have to go and try and attack these brick, this brick chimney here. And this has proven very difficult because of all the subtlety. That's not it. All the subtlety in this thing. It's just very difficult to model it just right. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to do it. And then you're just going to have to get in there and test and figure it out and try and make it look like the picture. And if it doesn't look just like the picture, that's okay too. The composition will hopefully be there by the end and your lighting will be right. And that will make a bigger make a bigger difference than the uh, subtle texture in your brick. Although that really sells this photo as photorealistic. So let's look at some ideas on how we can model that. I'll get right into it. Just minimize this here. You can see I've gone in and finished up some more of my model. And that chimney is gonna be right here basically. We'll just put it there and extrude it up. And that'll be my base. And then I'll just take this and hit Alt Q to isolate so that I'm working just on this shape here. That gives me the basic shape to build two. Now, if you look at the picture, you'll see that there's one, two, three bricks, and then a half brick and a half brick. Now I've figured out from my studies of this picture, and this might not be completely right, but it's close. What I've figured out is that those bricks, what I'm putting them at is about nine and a half inches long by two and a half inches tall. So that's our basic building block right there. Now, if we turn that into an edit poly, now I've tested a million different ways to model this chimney and this is probably the best one I've found there's many different ways you could model each individual brick and stack them and then put a separate object just barely inside of those bricks to act as grout but if you look at the picture that's not really what we have going on here let's actually look at this really close you can see that the horizontal grout line is more defined than all the vertical ones so that's one thing to keep in mind the bricks are not placed completely flush with each other they kind of jog in and out a little bit. So that's another thing that we have to keep in mind. And then there's very subtle rounding on the bricks. They're not crisp and sharp on the edges. So we have to keep that in mind. So think about ways to model this. And I'm gonna show you what I've come up with. So if I take my basic shape and then make sure snap is on, hold down shift, drag from this point to that point make sure our edges are showing so we can see drag it again now we actually need to cut all these in half as well by selecting all those and hitting connect and then we'll drag out that last half brick over there we'll drag out this half brick over here by holding down shift and dragging simple poly modeling like I showed you recently for the poly modeling of the building. So there is the basic structure of our brick and now we can take this edge and drag it up. Now this will get a little bit tedious because there's a lot of bricks and there's no quick shortcut to just do this all at the same time. Now what I've done is take these edges here I want to be in the right view, I guess. Okay, so take, select this edge here, go to ring, then go to loop, and that will just select all that. And then you want to chamfer it for that horizontal grout line, about there. So it's a well-defined grout line. Now what we need to do is drag around this corner, obviously. So let's drag in the X direction. We actually need to measure this out so that it's the right distance. So let's do that real quick. Again, we need our basic shape of nine and a half. Yeah, actually I made it half of nine and a half. And I'll show you why we do that. You'll This will all make sense as we get further along. So that's our basic building block structure. And then we'll take and keep dragging out that same distance like we did before. What did I do wrong here? 
I dragged the wrong way. You actually want to drag that right there. Drag, drag while holding shift. That's creating new polygon faces for us. Fantastic. Now, so we've got the corner turned right there. That's great. All right, what we actually want to do now, once we have our basic setup, let's make sure that this joint up here is approximately the same width as this joint here. It's gonna make up our horizontal joints in the bricks. Same with this bottom one. Now let's select all of those joints and we'll just bevel them in. Because if you look closely at that picture, you'll see that those joints are beveled in on those bricks. It kind of makes it hard to create, but we're doing our best here. So the bevel tool, I selected my faces, I hit the bevel dialog box over here, and remember if you right click on this it sets everything to zero. So that's where we want to start, and then bevel in, or really extrude in, and then tighten the bevel so that it looks like that, it looks like a nice grout line. In profile if you look at it, it looks like that. Make sure it's going by local normal so that it's beveling in equally on all sides. Okay, now we go in and select the vertical joints for our bricks. And they're gonna stagger like this. I'll go ahead and do that for all of them. Remember here as we go around the corner, it goes half brick and then full brick. So it goes to there. Okay, with all those selected, we'll go into the chamfer tool just do a little chamfer like that. Actually, no, for our horizontal joint, let's make it a little bigger like that. So they're not too noticeable, but you can see them. Now we have to go in and select all our bricks individually. So let's do that. We're in face mode and we're just gonna go select them. Make sure not to select the joints in between. Once those are all selected, Let's take our extrude tool, reset to zero, and then go just slightly up like that. So now we have a tiny horizontal joint and a big, sorry, a, a tiny vertical joint and a big horizontal joint, which is great. Now, I intend to turbo smooth this in the end. So there's a really boxy looking bricks, but we need to turbo smooth it to get all the rounded edges and everything. So if we turbo smooth now, you'll see that it's not quite right. You can see that everything's rounding right there, so that doesn't work. Now the reason why is because we haven't gotten into a lot of poly modeling in this course. If you've taken my furniture modeling course, you'd know a lot about this already. But right there, that edge, what TurboSmooth is doing is basically rounding from this edge to that edge down there and just kind of cutting right through those. So it's basically just rounding off those corners. So we need to put a chamfer there. So what we need to do is go back to our face mode and make sure our selection is still there. Okay. So go back to our selection, do our little extrusion. Make sure on extrusion we're on local normal again. Perfect, there's our little extrusion. Now, if we just hold down control and go into edge mode, you can see that all the edges that were connected to the faces we had selected are now selected themselves. And we actually wanna get these guys right here. So what we need to do is grow it once, like that. And then that should work if we do a chamfer now. Let's see, what's this gonna do? That might make a bit of a mess right there. Let's see when we turbo smooth. Okay, so everything actually looks fine, except for right there, where you can see we didn't put a chamfer there, and so turbo smooth is smoothing all the way around that corner. So what we need to do is go back before the chamfer, go to edges and just add in these edges right in here. 
Now, if none of this poly, uh, let's go to the top view and just add it like this. If none of this poly stuff is making f f uh, sense to you, then I suggest taking my furniture class, which is really a advanced poly modeling class. And all the poly, poly modeling techniques that I'm showing here are explained much more in depth. But for now, this is the best way that I've seen to, or that I've figured out to model these bricks. So now let's put that chamfer back on. And you can see there, now we've got a double edge. And so the smooth will only happen around this small corner instead of around this big corner. So let's put that turbo smooth back on. Okay, and there's the basics of our bricks. Now what we can do is things like, let's see, where's our basic shape? So over here, we really want to rotate that to 90 and set it there. And let's actually flip it, because our camera is over in this area. Flip in the Y. And then what we can do is use the handy dandy symmetry modifier. drag it in the X, flip it. And put it right there in the center. We actually need to be about over here. Put it right in the center of that joint there. And then make sure your welding isn't too high. So yeah, something like right there. Okay. Now you could do another symmetry modifier. Symmetry modifier is cool because you can just grow your grow your model by using a couple different ones. So now we're this long. We'll go to the next joint over. And now we've got enough brick. Okay. And if you wanted to build in that other side, you could you could do that with a symmetry modifier as well. Let's actually do that. Flip it along the Z. Move it up. Nope. Go into the sub, sub object of the mirror line. Move it to the center. Now from the left, we need to look and make sure that everything's right. Let's turn off that turbo smooth so we can see better. So we need that middle joint to show up right there. Keep that right in the center. Make sure the welding is looking right by putting it to zero. And there you have it. There's the basics. Now in the next video, I'll add some more noise and things like that. But if I turn my turbo smooth back on here, you can see there is my basic bricks.